some requests to go through this brochette question um, about a chain of Italian restaurants. It came from the 71271 paper from 2021. So I'm just going to look at the question and then think about some approaches we could adopt to answering it. So um, it said that Bruschette is a chain of nine Italian restaurants set up by the owner Enzo. There was only one restaurant for many years until his son Charles persuaded him to grow the business. They have successfully opened two new restaurants a year since Charles became a partner four years ago. So that makes the nine, two a year plus the original one. Um, this expansion has caused occasional cash flow problems as Enzo is keen to avoid borrowing money. So you can see there that I've highlighted what I think are probably some salient points in the uh, source data. Currently, the accounts are recorded manually using a single entry system. To reduce the paperwork, Enzo has always paid immediately for supplies, which means he benefits from prompt payment discounts with certain suppliers. Sometimes Enzo bulk buys to save money, but this often results in food waste. It also takes up additional storage space, which Charles believes could be converted to provide additional seating. So that's in the restaurant. Um, Enzo pays his staff weekly in cash, which is time consuming. Customer orders are taken using a pen and paper. As a result, there are minimal records kept. Enzo pays an accountant £6,000 a year to check his financial records, which he spends time preparing himself. Charles feels that the company, now it said company in the question, I think this was a partnership though, so it shouldn't have mentioned the company, needs to move with the times. He's seen larger chains where the staff use mobile technology in the restaurants to take orders and payments from customers electronically. Charles would like to introduce this to the Busquette restaurants. So loads and loads of information there. Um, a little bit behind the times, probably the systems that they're currently using worked well when there was just one restaurant Enzo was running that by himself. Now they've expanded though, um, and there are only two of them to oversee nine restaurants. Things are starting to go um, a little bit awry. So let's read on and see what other information we were given. Um, Charles has researched and found accounting software packages, which will do the following. Inventory tracking. So that's gonna help keep tabs on the stock, particularly if it's perishable items. So at the moment it says that um, Enzo buys a lot of stuff in bulk. Um, which is resulting in food wastage. So obviously we can track that a bit more smartly. We can maybe reduce the order quantities, order more frequently um, and more accurately and reduce waste. Employee payroll, if you remember, they told us that the employee was currently being done weekly um, and they were paid in cash, which was very time consuming. So this could be automated so it can deal with the hours worked and the employee payments. So they could maybe automate the payments um, straight into employees' bank accounts. Um, it will also do the double entry bookkeeping and create income statements and statements of financial position. So it says that from speaking to his staff, Charles knows that there may be some staff resistance to the introduction of the software. Um, a supervisor at the most profitable restaurant is quite opposed to any changes. This restaurant has regularly had small amounts of money missing from the tills. Charles, Charles is also aware of the amount of time each restaurant manager spends checking tills banking money. It doesn't say what Enzo's reaction might be to this. So Enzo, remember, is the, the dad who set this business up um, and is currently trying to do everything manually. Um, now, Charles has estimated that Brusquette will have the following costs for switching systems. So this is automating it, bringing in the new computers and software. So to buy and install the 10 computers, which is one for each restaurant, plus one for the office is going to cost £15,000. The accounting software for all computers is £150 a month. So that's going to be £1,800 a year. There's going to be initial staff training, £2,000, and some costs, £1,000, for transferring data from the old system to the new system, so from the old manual system to the new system. Okay. So what we've got to do is evaluate whether Brusquette should purchase the accounting software and make the proposed changes that Charles has suggested, justify your answer, and consider both financial and non-financial factors. So this isn't really kind of weighing up two different options. It's, it's about evaluating whether they should adopt the um, accounting software packages and whether they should maybe think about converting the storage space into additional tables. Um, and obviously, we've got to split things between the financial and non-financial factors. So I would start, first of all, with the counting software. That's clearly going to be the main issue here. It's going to solve potentially a number of their um, existing problems, but obviously it's going to have some disadvantages as well. So I would suggest that when you're planning this essay, you need to think about 
the accounting software in terms of financial advantages and disadvantages, and then also think about some non-financial um, advantages and disadvantages. So first obvious financial advantage is the accountancy fees will probably be reduced. That could save up to £6,000 per annum. Um, food waste is going to be minimised through the inventory tracking and smaller in, um, orders being placed. So any reduction in food waste will have an impact on profits, a positive one. The payroll could be automated and staff paid more securely via the bank. So again, that's going to save time and money, lower wages and reduced banking costs from processing cash. So um, we could have lower wages because we're going to be more efficient by using the accounting software rather than have so many people. Um, and then obviously banks charge money for processing cash. So if there's less of that because the, the customers are paying electronically, that should save some bank charges. Financial disadvantages, though, the obvious one there is the initial outlay, £18,000 to buy the computers and the software. Um, and process the uh, the change in system. We've got an ongoing cost of eighteen hundred eighteen hundred pounds per annum. That was one hundred and fifty a month. If we are placing smaller orders, we could lose some trade discounts um, that we currently get. And how will we pay for the system if Enzo is not keen to borrow? So can we get interest free credit perhaps from the the software supplier? But uh, you know we don't know about how much cash the business has got. And there are going to be further staff training costs when new staff join. So we're going to pay initially to have the staff trained. But there's no guarantee that they will be there long term. So we may incur some further costs in the future. In terms of non financial advantages and disadvantages. Um, the double entry bookkeeping system should give Enzo and Charles some more management information, certainly more than they've got currently in the form of management accounts. So income statement, statement of financial position could be prepared monthly, quarterly, whatever they see fit. Um, the storage space could be repurposed for additional seating. So additional seats could potentially mean more income. Staff time is going to be saved, could potentially reduce the number of staff. Um, and Enzo is going to have more free time if he doesn't have to check the accounting records. So that could be more free time to spend doing things he wants to or managing the, uh, the different branches of the business. Non-financial disadvantages, though, some of the staff may not be happy with the change from cash to bank payments for wages. What will happen if the, uh, the system crashes? We're going to need to have some sort of manual backup in place. Um, data protection issues, so what data is going to be stored on the system, probably particularly pertinent with the, um, the staff details, bank details and so on. We're going to need to make sure that uh, that information is kept safe. Transfer of data from the old records may cause errors, so we obviously need to make sure that that data is up to date and accurate before we put it into the new um, system. Once we've evaluated the software, I would then look at the, the use of mobile tech for orders and customer payments. So these are going to be, I don't know if that's indicative of the kind of thing that the staff might use, but where they use it like a little, almost like an iPhone really, to take the orders um, and then obviously automate the, uh, the payments electronically when the customers pay. So advantage of this, less cash on the premises means less chance of theft, although some customers are still want to gonna, oh, some, some customers are still going to want to pay in cash, so it's not going to eliminate that entirely. Um, the orders can be tracked. So if they're placed electronically, then um, when they go through the, on the system, perhaps there's going to be less chance of, of errors with the customer orders. Faster orders may lead to improved satisfaction from the customers. Um, and the obvious one here, tables could be turned more quickly and more customers served each day. So if we are being more efficient, the orders are, are processed and the payments are taken more quickly, then uh, we can get customers out the door and get some new ones into those seats. Disadvantages though, some staff may be resistant to change, especially the manager in the most profitable restaurant. Um, staff may worry about losing their jobs, become demotivated. So if they are more efficient, then we may require fewer of them. So that could be an issue. Orders may be input incorrectly into the system. So uh, with any computer system, things are only as good as the, the information being entered into it. Um, I would also throw into this some other ideas to solve cash flow problems because clearly that you know cash flow is not brilliant. Enzo is not keen to borrow, um, so maybe we could look at purchasing raw materials, so the food and what have you, on credit rather than making cash purchases. Um, we could ask the hardware supplier for interest-free credit, and maybe we could look at the idea that the partners might be able to introduce capital from their own funds. So Enzo and Charles may be willing to to introduce funds. Um, 
And there are a number of limitations to the data, so a number of things that we don't know that we should probably try and introduce. So what is the value of wasted food? I mean, how much are we talking about here? How much cash has been stolen? Are we talking large amounts? Or are we talking fairly small amounts? Obviously, these amounts combined are going to need to be quite big to compensate for the, uh, the outlay in the computer equipment and the ongoing cost of the uh, software. So will the savings in food and staff hours and lost cash be enough to offset those additional costs? We don't know that. How profitable is the business? Can it afford to pay for conversion of the storage space and extra table as well as uh, extra tables as well as all the other costs that's going to have an expense? Is there demand for the extra tables? How often are the restaurants fully booked? How much of the £6,000 of accountancy fees will be eliminated? There's still going to be some end of year work to do. So um, however good the bookkeeping system is, the accountant's still going to need to get involved and sort out things like depreciation, partnership appropriation, all that kind of thing. Um, are the systems compatible? So the inventory, the payroll and the bookkeeping, are they all compatible? Will things transfer seamlessly between them? Will the inventory transfer into the end of year bookkeeping system? Will the wages payments be able to be transferred easily? Um, or will we need extra work to transfer those figures? So if we're looking at different software suppliers, there may be problems. If it's all from the same software supplier, you would hope that these things would be compatible with one another. Um, is the broadband good enough to operate this system or are we going to have extra costs in upgrading that? Um, does Enzo agree with these changes or could there be conflict? Is he happy um, with the way things are going? Um, how accurate are the estimated costs? So any forecasts, obviously there's always a danger um, that they're going to be inaccurate. The figures do look suspiciously rounded, so they're nice round numbers. So, you know, have they just been plucked out of the air or do we have genuine quotes from suppliers for the the computer equipment and what have you. Um, so conclusion, you're going to need to think about your con conclusion. What do you recommend? Should they go with the software? Shouldn't they? I think probably yes, they should. Um, you know, what about the other changes? Do you think they should? Do you think they shouldn't? Why? You know, make sure that you justify your recommendations when you write that conclusion. Um, so over to you then. When you have written your answer or at least made your plan, think about have you included any calculations and written about them? So have you worked out the amount of the initial outlay and the ongoing costs and the potential savings. So it's no good just doing the calculations. You actually need to embed them in your answer somewhere. Um, have you identified a similar number of financial and non-financial pros and cons? So what you want there is balance. So you, you, it's, it's never going to be exactly the same, but you want roughly the same number. And there's no hard and fast rule on this. Um, you know, it's as many as you need to answer the question properly. So I appreciate that, that is very vague, but that is the reality of the situation, I'm afraid. Um, have you pointed out any limitations to the data given? What else do you need? So what questions do you want to ask Enzo and Charles? Go back and have a look at the, uh, the previous slides if you're not sure. Um, have you demonstrated a logical chain of reasoning? So this is the holy grail, this is what we're aspiring to. So this is one that takes some basic knowledge or some basic facts given in the, the scenario, applies what your knowledge is about that to the context and then analyzes the impact on the business. So using connectives and thinking about consequences. So, you know, if we do introduce the software, think about the costs, think about the other impact on the staff um, and, and explain that. So developing a chain of reasoning. So don't scatter random points across the page. Try and link your, your points together. So examiners continually refer to chains of reasoning when showing top mark answers. And this is the only way you are going to get up to, to level four or five is to to demonstrate that chain of reasoning. Um, and have you actually answered the question, what do you advise and why? So hopefully that's given you some ideas as to how you can tackle this question, what you need to write about. What I will try and do at some point is put together a, a model answer in inverted commas um, and, and get that onto a video so that you can see. Um, but uh, hopefully in the meantime, that's given you some, some guidance. Thanks very much for watching.